everyone. We'll talk about the importance of bioenergetics in the context of metabolism. I'm sure you have learned many times about thermodynamics. Therefore, you should know what delta G is, the difference between spontaneous and non-spontaneous reactions, as well as endergonic versus exergonic reactions. You should also know about activation energy and how enzymes facilitate reactions. Something important to remember is the difference between thermodynamics and kinetics. Thermodynamics measures the spontaneity of a reaction, whereas in kinetics you measure the rate of the reaction. Enzymes, as you know, accelerate the rate of reaction by stabilizing the transition state, thus decreasing the activation energy of a reaction. They do not get consumed and do not affect the delta G of the reaction. Do remember that enzymes cannot drive endergonic reactions. To drive endergonic reactions, we use something called reaction coupling. We combine a non-spontaneous reaction with a spontaneous one with an intermediate common on both reactions. In this schematic, you see reaction 1 is non-spontaneous and reaction 2 is spontaneous. We use D as a common intermediate. This example summarizes the coupling. The first half reaction is endergonic with a positive delta G. The second half reaction is exergonic with a negative delta G. Pyrophosphate is an intermediate. When you add these two reactions together, the net delta G is negative. For a coupled reaction, delta G1 plus delta G2 has to be less than zero. The energy-rich bonds are called the fat phosphoanhydride bonds. Breaking these bonds release a large amount of energy. Note the alpha, beta, and gamma phosphoryl groups. There are two ways you can use ATP. Type 1 is going from ATP to ADP, then ADP to AMP. Each of these bonds release 30.5 kilojoules. Breaking the last phosphoryl releases only 14 kilojoules. The second type is going from ATP to AMP and pyrophosphates. This release releases 31 kilojoules of energy. The phosphates then is broken down to release 33 kilojoules of energy. Thus, reactions that need more energy use this process. Our body has finite amount of ATP. It varies based on the tissue and its metabolic activity. For example, if you were to start sprinting, you'd be able to run for two seconds with the ATP present in your muscles. Therefore, ATP is continuously made and restored, resynthesized and replenished. Thank you. If you have any questions, please use the comment section below.